I'm Nasrin Sultan Amitu. Um, I am a professional cartoonist and I happen to be a student and teacher of science education. So today I want to talk a little more about comics and cartoon but from a different dimension. Firstly, I want to start from something else. I think many of us know this person, Carl Sagan. He was one of the best science communicators we have experienced in the human history. Once he expressed his concern about science literacy like this, that he expressed his concern that many of us, we know very little about science and technology, whereas we depend a lot on science and technology. So I, I started from his verse and unfortunately we express the same concern after decades. The point is why science literacy is important. You may ask that how it's related to cartoon and comics but I'm coming to the point. Firstly I want to uh, discuss a little about why science literacy is important. I think most of us we already know why science literacy is important. It's science and technology it's part of our life and in many ways science literacy is associated with scientific knowledge science literacy is associated with skills it's associated with scientific values and if we want to know the uh, significance of this literacy and if we want to know that uh, why life should be miserable without science literacy we can think about one or two example like you know about fairness creams, right? The, the beauty products, we see advertisement every time on the television. There's some, some person wearing a medical apron and tries to give some uh, scientific knowledge or something, some weird ridiculous experiments that actually expresses how the beauty products actually work. In 2018, there was a study in India which showed um, I don't exactly remember the exact fraction, but more than 41% women, they used beauty products, the fairness creams to be particular. And all the products they used, they had a very alarming amount of heavy metals. But from the sample, more than 90% women, they actually believed and they were satisfied with the beauty products. And they, they believed that they worked. So it's, it's a very small example. You see ev everywhere, you see the result of the lack of science literacy. You talk about the environmental issues, you talk about climate change, you talk about nutrition and whatnot. You find a lot of hazards we are facing everyday life because of the lack of the scientific literacy. Now the point is, how do we actually deliver the science literacy? The most common mode of delivering science knowledge are, is the formal science education. We know, like when we were a kid, we went through schools and we had a science curriculum. It's a very vigorous curriculum. And every kid goes to school, not in Bangladesh, in the whole world. So we are supposed to have the basic science knowledge and basic science skills through that education system. But where is the problem? Why the things are like that after all the 12 years of education, like primary and secondary, and afterwards? One problem we seriously noticed that science is perceived as a very, very complex subject in schools. In Bangladesh, after grade 8, they have to choose between among science, humanities, and business studies, and usually the talented students, according to the school authority, they are more uh, encouraged to take the science stream because science is difficult. Science is very complex. You know, if you are not that talented, you cannot actually study science. That is one problem. And another problem, uh, as I told you, I happen to be a science educator, so I had to research a lot about these things. And besides science anxiety, another very, very important concern is that Science fields, in general STEM fields, they are very male dominated fields. And it's the problem in the whole world that the female students, they don't uh, usually identify themselves as science learners. They have very low science identities. So that's another concern. So when uh, having a dual, um, what should I say, not dual, maybe parallel profession, so I started to think, how, how can I contribute in that? Well, there can be a lot of solutions. <clears throat> to be precise, 
not like four or five, there are many solutions that can be helped. But I chose one from them, and that is science comics. And now you may ask me, why science comics? Why not anything else? My question is, why not science comics? Why not cartoon? Because being a cartoonist, being in my life, like I started in 2016, it's been 13 years I've been cartooning, and I really find out that how children are really, really, they enjoy cartoon so much. And if I look back to my childhood, I, I think many of the audience, they can remember a cartoon series, Captain Planet. Do you remember, do you recall that? And I, I really loved that cartoon series. And I think when I was a child, that cartoon series, that helped me a lot to develop my environmental awareness. So we thought that why not using cartoon to develop science literacy or develop awareness? So I want to give a very small example. This is a typical graphical presentation of wavelength. Uh, minimum science knowledge people, they can understand. Yeah, it's very easy. It's wavelength, how to measure wavelength. And we express it with lambda. But how about that? This is also another graphical presentation of wavelength. And I think I would vote for the second one. And if I were a kid, I would go for the second one. Second one looks more interesting. Just because they added up with some cartoon illustration that gives us a little comic relief. So we are lucky that uh, this year, no, not that this year, from, since the last year, the science textbooks, we uh, were privileged to work in there. We incorporated some cartoon illustration in the textbooks as well. But when we talk about cartoon illustration, it's definitely, it helps a lot. We want to uh, develop a, a more, more like, what should I say, elaborated way. So we started thinking to use science comics. So why science comics? Firstly, I think a very uh, strong side of science comics is that it adds humor. You know, humor is one of the things that make us human. So when we add humor with some complex subject, it makes it a little more complex, uh, a little less complex, a little more interesting. So that is one thing. And secondly, I think another very strong side of comics is it tells a story. Not only a concept, it tells a story. When you read a comics, I was talking about Captain Planet, it had a story, it had some characters. So even if a kid, they are not really interested to learn a science concept, but they really want to know a story. They want to listen to a story. They, don't, they want to look at the sequential illustration to get the story. So we are thinking that it really can help us to uh, deliver the science concepts if we use science comics in that way. And another thing, we wanted to use science comics as a stairway to empower women as well. Because as I was talking earlier, the female students they, in the whole world, they usually have a very low science identity. So if we can uh, deliver, uh, use that media to deliver science concept, maybe it can help them to empower and develop a STEM career, maybe. So if I want to summarize science uh, comics, how can it help? I, I should mention that I, I never said that science comics can replace the mainstream science education. It can supplement. It cannot replace because in the mainstream formal education, there are some certain procedures. There is a huge curriculum they have to cover with. So I better say that it can supplement. It can supplement the formal science education. And in that way, eventually, it can help to develop science literacy. So that was our main idea. If uh, you ask me, I should admit that science comics is not entirely a new idea. There are science comics worldwide. But we found a few issues in there as well. Firstly, they are not local. So if I talk about Bangladeshi people, no science comics were there when I was a kid. And when I started exploring it, I didn't find any science comics. And there are some other issues, like I said, the gender gap and all. So we wanted to come up a very customized solution, a very personal solution with it. So we came up with our very own recipe. 
we tried to deliver the science concept through storytelling and using our very own characters and our own context and keeping in mind with the gender gap. So we tried to make our contents more gender sensitive. So our kids, whether they're male or female or other gender, they feel more comfortable with science. Okay, so then we came up with our very own project that is Project Tiktaalik. So I know many people will ask like, what is Tiktaalik? So I should say at least a few lines. Tiktaalik is an animal, it's a transitional animal between fish and tetrapod. We know all tetrapods evolved from fish so it was a transitional animal. And from the point, uh, viewpoint, we took Tiktaalik as our name and title. It's more philosophical than scientific because we know we have, uh, if we have a little knowledge about evolution, there is, uh, evolution is not a straight way. It's very complex. But we tried to figure out what uh, philosophy is behind that, that when a, a, an animal it went beyond their comfort zone, it went beyond their ocean and started to work on the land. So we try to catch that philosophy. I, I'm saying again, it's not very scientific, but it's more philosophical. So we try to take that spirit and use it in our project. So we named it Project Tiktaalik. Well, that animal looks much like this. But uh, you know, I'm a cartoonist, so it's more cartooning. That I don't think the real Titanic had this big smile on its face. So anyway, so what do we do? We do web materials. We do science outreach programs. We arrange science talks. <coughs> but mostly, we focus on science comics, as I was saying earlier. So to present the science comics, we use storyline and we use our very own characters. These three characters, they are the main characters of Project Tiktaalik. And uh, you say Pluto, Ringi, and Dipu. Pluto is very gender neutral character because it's a magnifying glass. So it's very uh, emotional, it's very sensitive, it's a little superstitious as well. Then comes Rinki. She is named as Shabjanta Rinki because she's the smart one. Uh, by, to use this character, the real reason, or the real purpose was actually to represent a female student who is smart so that the female learners, they can relate themselves with this character. So we make the, made this character smart and intelligent. She is science lover, she is very adventurous, she is very brave, so we use this character. The next one is a bully character. You know, when you make a story, there should be some conflict. So you need some negative characters. So it's not a negative character. It's very like innocent, but he's bully. So he tries to uh, exploit Pluto most of the time, and Rink is the savior. That is the main storyline of most of our comics. So this is a resemblance how we actually try to explain a science topic in our comics. It's a page from our comics. And in this page, we try to uh, explain the DNA pattern, how the DNA is formed, and uh, how the nitrogen compounds are in there. So it, I showed this page just to, uh, just to have, a, uh, you have a glimpse that how we actually present the complex topics. But as I was saying earlier, we use a story. So this is one story. This, uh, the bully character, he was kind of actually making a uh, story up to befool Pluto, that he has an uncle and he went to Everest, he brought a chicken that laid an egg which floats on the water. And then uh, Rinky came and Rinky helped him, him because he, uh, she actually understood how does it work, the water of thirst. So she eventually figures out that Dipu actually mixed some salt in the water and the water grows heavier and the egg started to float. So actually this, was, this is the story. And when a kid is reading the comics, we don't expect them to, very, to be very, very science enthusiastic. We just want them to enjoy the story, to get the humor. And we will be very happy if they learn the science concepts side by side. And if, we, if they don't, we, it's OK. It's OK if they don't learn the science behind it. It's OK if they just find it a little less complex. If they find the science a little more interesting, we are happy with that. So I wanted to show 
the little comics as a uh, sample, but I want to just go through some books we published. It is the, uh, I should probably say this is the first science comics in Bangla and also in Bangladesh. And <laughs> thank you. <coughs> and this, this is another book. We uh, got a fund from US State Department and we uh, distributed 5,000 copies for free all across Bangladesh. And it's available online, so anybody, if you're interested, you can uh, just knock us and get a link for the soft copy. And it's a recent book. It's, it was published in last book fair. It's also another science comics. It is a comp compilation of six short comics. Thanks again. And beside the regular publication, book publication, we tried to uh, catch the other medias as well. It, this one was published in a, a teen web platform for the teens. It was done by A2I. And we regularly publish web comics in there so that many kids in the schools, they are directly connected to that uh, platform so they can avail that. Also, we do publish our comics in the popular magazines. Actually, we are trying to use as, as many media as possible to reach out the students. So that's all we do and what to do next. We have many plans to share a little. I, I want to say that we are planning to go for animated contents. And another thing I, I think is very important is to figure out how effective the comics are to, for the students. In, in actually, uh, we want to uh, run a real pedagogical research to know that how effective they are for children's learning, for developing children's science attitude and all. So that's in our plan. And I think that's all. And I want you to wish me a very best of luck because I left my teaching job for my project TikTalik and I'm planning to uh, use the rest of my days for this project. Thank you.